There is a popular saying in Britain that a good decision is getting on a plane when Kate Aidy is getting off. Kate Aidy is a veteran British journalist who worked for the BBC for most of her career. She began by working for regional radio and television centres. In 1976, she started working for the BBC National Television News Team. Her first big break was April 1980 at the Iranian Embassy siege in London. Aidy was the first journalist on the scene, and the BBC interrupted broadcast of the World Snooker Championships to bring the report. Aidy broadcast live and unscripted to one of the largest news audiences ever, while crouched behind a car door. I admire her for keeping her head in this dangerous situation. This proved to be only the beginning of Aidy's fascinating career. She is heard here commenting on the events of the day. At seven o'clock, armed police moved in front of the embassy. Two men ran forward with a stretcher and went into the porch. A body was put on the stretcher and under cover from the marksman, taken out towards an ambulance. After this incident, Kate Aidy became a household name on British television. She was assigned to the American bombing of Tripoli in Libya in 1986 and was shot in the collarbone because of her close to the action approach. Aidy allegedly turned to the shooter and said, we don't behave like that in my country. And anyway, I'm only a reporter. This is a demonstration of her incredible bravery and wry sense of humor, both of which made her so good at her job. She was often seen broadcasting in the middle of the action, providing cutting edge information Libya was no exception. Four hours after the raid, the Libyans still have no idea how many people were injured here. This is at least two miles from the barracks. There are still people possibly buried under this rubble. The confusion is considerable. The Americans' intended target was possibly the central security headquarters. They missed. Instead, a medical clinic and ordinary flats and houses took the hit. Aidy also covered the Lockerbie bombing in 1988. In 1989, she was appointed the prestigious chief news correspondent of the BBC. That year, a historic event took place, the Tiananmen Square bombings. Aidy was once again dispatched there to report. After hours of shooting and facing a line of troops, the crowd is still here. They're shouting, stop the killing and down with the government. Subsequent events led her to report on the Gulf War from 1990 to 91. Here she is reporting in her usual clipped tone and professional manner from the war zone. British troops in the Saudi desert were alerted to an increased threat of chemical warfare. And today, added to the respirators and the protective clothing precautions, nerve agent pre-treatment tablets. This is the first time that British soldiers have been instructed to take these by their military commanders. They have been taken in test conditions, they have been tried and proven. However, as I say, it is the, it's the first time they've been taken on a mass basis in the field. You've had a couple now. Are you all right? Yeah, fine, no problems at all. <laughs> Aidy was well known for her combination of pearls and flak jacket on camera, which came to emphasize the gravity of an unfolding news story. Kate Aidy does not, however, get a thrill from danger, despite the extensive time she has spent in places of conflict. I am not in it just to get an adrenaline rush. No way, she said. In 1994, she even covered the Rwandan genocide. She was also in Paris on the day of Lady Diana's death and experienced the grief felt by the people there. The site of the accident is a mundane traffic tunnel in the center of the city. For those who have come to look, there is very little to convey what happened here. Perhaps this has added to the sense of disbelief and shock that is very evident. All day there has been a constant stream to the spot. Tourists, Parisians, travelers, French citizens, Japanese students, American soldiers, British holidaymakers. Most could not find words enough to express their feelings. In 2000, she reported on events in Sierra Leone and was also briefly sent to the United States after 9-11. In 2003, Aidy withdrew from frontline reporting at the age of 57. She is now a freelance journalist and presenter on BBC4. She has been awarded the Order of the British Empire and a prestigious award from BAFTA. She has honorary degrees from 10 universities. Aidy has a vast knowledge of politics and current affairs, which I admire about her. 
She is uncompromising, authoritative, cool and courageous in all situations. Kate Aidy is a great journalist because she demonstrates how strong women can be in the media industry. She also entered the domain of war, which is traditionally a men's arena, and made her mark there. She is straight talking and believes in presenting only facts to her audience for their own interpretation. She defines journalists as people forever asking the question why, as she has demonstrated throughout her successful 30-year career.